Big news this week by our friends over in Prairie Village. Once in a while, they get something right in Prairie Village. Uh, They elected this week, and they decided to crack down on Airbnbs and other short-term rentals. And to that, I say, halle freaking luya. They are now putting in place a 30-day minimum stay for Airbnbs within city limits of Prairie Village. It was a 10-2 vote this week, and current owners will need to find new use for their spaces by November 1st of 2025 or face fines of up to $500 per day. This is a no-brainer. Your home is, for most normal Americans, your biggest asset, right? I may, may, now, as you get older, you're invested, 401Ks, portfolio grows. Maybe it's not the biggest, but for many people, it's not the biggest. It's certainly number two. It's right up there. And what you are seeing happen in the wild, wild west world of real estate right now is a couple of things that are happening that are concerning trends. You have big banks who are getting involved in the housing market to turn a profit and make them rentals, which is squeezing out a lot of people who are just looking to raise a family. Then you have people who are using these homes and are turning them into Airbnb rentals, which also drives up demand when it comes to those looking for homes. And then on the back end, it changes neighborhoods. None of these things are good for neighborhoods. None of these things are good for communities. They're not. If you want to go get involved in hotels, well, guess what? Go start a hotel. Go buy a motel. Go start your motel somewhere. But turning neighborhoods into transient places for people to crash for a weekend is not something that just inherently is good for American society. And if you're somebody who is in one of those neighborhoods and suddenly the house next to you is turned into a party den every weekend, well, the largest investment that you have or one of your largest investments is now next door to something that is highly undesirable. When you bought a home in an R1 location, right, residential property, and you're thinking, hey, good spot, got a bunch of homes next to me, single family, maybe I'll have a neighbor or two that I'll like. Well, now... Suddenly, it's not that anymore. Now, you may as well have opened up shop next to a hotel. And you don't know who's coming in. You don't know who's coming out. There is no reason for every other city in Johnson County and every other, frankly, city on the Missouri side as well to implement a similar rule. If you want to stay for 30 days, okay, that's something. That's somebody who's there for some long-term period of time. But this stay a night, crash a night, crash two nights thing is completely ridiculous and is changing neighborhoods all over the country, including right here in the Kansas City area. So this was a very good move from Prairie Village. And KCTV 5 was there this week when this decision was made at City Hall. And there were obviously those speaking out on behalf of the ban and those who are trying to prevent the ban from taking place. There are strangers that come and go on a weekly basis. Safety is the primary concern that I have. Focus on the root word of neighborhood. It's the neighbors. And that's what I would ask the council to protect first and foremost is the social fabric of the neighbors and the neighborhood. Recently, local Airbnb owners and managers have started packing the room as well. Tonight, they remarked that their rentals are not like hotels and less of a nuisance than some long-term neighbors. This is not downtown where you have a bunch of bachelor parties. This is people that are coming to see their family. We know a lot about the short-term renters. They, They have to be vetted. I would look at what Fairway did A three-night minimum stay stops all parties. I encourage you, for the benefit of those of us who can't stay in expensive hotels, to consider voting no on this now and looking at other options. City staff said there are about 9,000 single-family homes in the city. Of those, about 830 are rentals, and the city estimates 30 of those rental properties are used as short-term rentals. So 30 out of 9,000 is not a big number, right? But nip it in the bud. There is no downside to nipping this thing in the bud as quickly as you possibly can 
to end it before it spirals out of control. Because if you don't do it now, what you're going to see happen is there's only going to be more investors saying it's Prairie Village. You're a few minutes from the plaza. You're a few minutes from places downtown. The World Cup is coming up. Oh, this is going to be a great investment for us, John. Well, yeah, even at 30, though, if you get calls at 15 would be high. But if you get calls at half of those, you know, in a similar time frame, you're taxing the, you know, law enforcement. Absolutely. And that gets overlooked as well. So when you think about what you want out of your neighborhood and how you look at rental properties in general, this is not an anti-rental property conversation. You want to have, I mean, there's plenty of people who have rental properties. It's an investment for them. But you're leasing to people for at least a few months, right? If not one year, two year. I know people on three year leases for rental properties. And you want good people and you are incentivized to have good people into your rental property because ultimately what it does is it saves you money if you're not having to fix the whole thing up because of a bad renter. You want that. With an Airbnb, you're not incentivized on any of that. You're not. And for a neighborhood... It's one thing. I mean, I've got some renters in my neighborhood, and I know them. They've got kids. They're great people. They want to buy. They can't right now. But you get to know them, right? They've been there for years. That's not the Airbnb model. 913-408-7957. If um, this is you on either side of this, and I've been on one side of it, where you suddenly see Airbnb folks popping up in your backyard It is not pleasant. I've experienced it firsthand, and it is weird. And I know neighborhoods and HOAs are trying to do something about it, but city councils can get their act together as well, and that's what Prairie Village did this week. 913-408-7957. Steve is in Overbrook. Hey, Steve, you're on KCMO. Good morning. Hey, good morning. I want to thank you guys again for a great show every day, so thank you. Thank you. Um, So I've... Now, you know, I've been paying close attention to this and what have you because I'm actually considering uh, buying some lots up by Perry, Kansas, you know, north of Lawrence. Yep. Building little cabins and doing the Airbnb Verbo thing. And I understand that's probably more of a vacation mindset than it is coming in town for a couple of days to see family. However, as I've listened to this entire argument, what I'm getting tired of is city councils and, you know, homeowners or what have you, you know, basically saying, hey, you can't do this with your property. And I'm sorry. If I pay the taxes on that property, you know, I don't – look, there are people that come into our neighborhood that, that we don't know every day. You don't usually know your mailman because they stop at a community mailbox. You don't know the UPS guy. You don't know the Amazon guy. They've not been, quote, unquote, vetted by anyone. It is no one's right to tell anybody what to do with the property they, they pay taxes on. Well, hold on, though. So, let me ask you, though, Steve. If you buy a property that's zoned R1 and then suddenly you want to turn it into basically commercial use or hospitality zoning – You can't just do that, you know. You can't just do that because you own it. You've got to go through a process. Well, then then put a permit process in place. I mean, and that's all it takes. I mean, somebody should be able to – my second wife had family that lived in Nashville, and they used to come to Lawrence and stay in Airbnb and Burbos all the time because regular hotel pricing or resort pricing or whatever, way too high. Kind of like going to a Chiefs game. Not everybody can afford a Chiefs game. So if you can find an Airbnb or a Verbo for like $69 a night and it's a nice, clean environment and you're there for three days, no harm, no foul. Yeah, but once again, where do you draw the line on that? If I want to open up a bar in my garage and I've got people showing up front door, you know, side door back of the house because I've got this great bar in my garage and I'm running a business out of it. I mean, I, that, that doesn't seem like something that's beneficial to my neighborhood. And why should that be allowed? So where do you draw that line? Well, I don't know that there's a line to be drawn because people run businesses out of their home every day now, especially well, in 2024. Folks. Yes, yes. I mean, running it, but I'm saying when you're running like a commercial operation out of your house versus, let's say you've got a dog grooming business, right, where you've got people showing up left and right, where do you draw that line? I know it's a gray area, but you're talking about basically rezoning a property without having the government involved. And if that's the world we're going to live in, fine, but just wipe the whole thing clean and don't have any zoning regulations. Well, I believe in zoning. I mean, I do. It's, it's permitting. It's all those kind of things. But I bet, you know, if you look at the real core of this, whether it's 30 days or three days or two days, it seems to me like the municipalities, you know, look, don't vote away your rights to the freedom to do what you want out of public safety. We have we've, we've done that in this country for over 200 years now. Hmm. It hasn't worked. It's fear mongering is all it is. What's fear mongering? Just saying, like, like I heard you. You know, you've got, you know, you're, you talk about your daughters and stuff all the time. And mm-hmm. You want to know who's around and who's renting and what have you. 
arguably that's really none of your business. Just be a dad or be a mom or be a responsible homeowner. But you don't have the right to regulate who stays or doesn't stay or buy or who rents in your neighborhood. You don't have that right. Yeah, but you don't have a right to turn your house into a you don't have a right to turn a house into a hotel. They put a permitting process in place, make it about money, because that's what the municipalities want. They want it to be about money. That's all all that's all government has become. Pull a permit, sixty five bucks. Pay the hotel franchise fees. Whatever that ends up being, it's all about revenue, Pete. It's not about people's rights. Well, I agree with you there. I mean, that's it's a good call, Steve. Thank you. Um, I agree yeah. with you there. Absolutely. The, the cities care about the bottom line. They've got to grow revenue however they can. No doubt about it. I mean, I will, I will give you that side of the argument for sure. What I don't think that neighborhoods should be forced to turn into is dealing with hotels, homes turning into hotels at will. I mean, there are ways to get into that business if you want to do it. And taking a property or a neighborhood that's zoned for R1 and suddenly saying, you know what, screw it. Whatever you want to do, go ahead, have a blast. I- I'm, I'm not on board with that. There's something to be said for if the government does anything. And if they care about anything, it should be protecting neighborhoods that are developing families, developing community, because we are losing that ad nauseum in this country every single day. So big news uh, this week, Prairie Village banning short-term Airbnb and just short-term rentals at large. you got to have at least a 30-day stay uh, in Prairie Village. That is going to be enacted in 2025. November 1 is when that's going to be taking place. So it only impacts, give or take, 30 properties in Prairie Village where there are 9,000. But you've seen this happen around parts of Johnson County. Leewood's got a similar rule in place, and I believe it should be happening all over the metro as these things keep popping up. David's in Cameron. He's on KCMO. Go ahead, David. Hey, Pete. I see both sides of this issue. Love Airbnb, Verbos. Uh, I think an outright ban is probably not the elegant solution. Uh, why not do something like require uh, ownership to be someone who is a, a citizen uh, of that municipality uh, to avoid the, the corporate housing takeover and things of that, that nature? Thought I'd get your thoughts. Well, it's better than nothing, David. <laughs> I, I would say that. But, I mean, how many people have dual residency, right, where they do half the year maybe here, they'll be in Florida or Arizona, so are there ways around it? Sure. Um, is it a step Probably. in the right direction? Yeah, it's better than nothing. I guess I would say that much. Somebody who theoretically yeah. cares about the community. Is that your point? Yeah, that's my point. And I think it's just a better experience as you're traveling. Uh, I rarely stay in a hotel ever anymore. If I'm traveling with my family, I'm going to default to an Airbnb. Um, it's just such a better experience. And I love the idea that I'm putting money maybe in a, a small business's pocket and not in a big hotel chain. Yeah, you know, listen, I've done, David, thanks so much. I've done the Airbnb thing too, right? I mean, most of us have done it. But when you're doing it and and what you're looking for, and if you're going on vacation somewhere, whether you're heading to the mountains, going to the beach, just looking for a weekend away, um, are you looking for a place like Prairie Village? Right? I mean, don't forget, we had that situation in Overland Park a couple of years ago. Where Airbnb, some guy out of town owned it, or some company out of town owned it. It was always a party place, and somebody was shot in, like, just your run-of-the-mill neighborhood in Overland Park outside of an Airbnb where there was a party happening. So those are the things where it's not unreasonable for neighbors to say, this is completely out of hand and completely out of control. And while I don't inherently like government getting involved, if the government is going to have all these different zoning regulations and requirements, then it should be on them to protect it as well. If not, just get rid of the whole damn thing, which we know is never going to happen. Ray's in Carney. Ray, you're on KCMO. What's happening, my man? Hey, how's it going? Going well. Uh, I live next door to one of these things. Um I'm in Kearney, rural Kearney, uh, so there's I got to deal through the county. I don't have a town to fall on. Yep. Uh, and I called them six months ago, or three, probably three months ago, about it because I had an issue of a guy walking in my yard, and I didn't know what was going on. 
uh, one of my neighbors actually found the <clears throat> Airbnb on the website and told us all about it. Well, finally we brought it up to the neighbor, and he's like, uh, in the Airbnb thing, it says, talk to your neighbors about this before you do it. Well, he didn't say anything, and he was running it for over a year, and we have all these random people coming in our neighborhood, and we live in a secluded neighborhood. And, hell, my wife doesn't even want to let <clears throat> let our kids go out and play. Mm. So what are you doing right now? Are you trying to lobby the county or? Uh, well, I was waiting to hear back from the county. I need to call them again and see what's going on. But mm-hmm. it doesn't seem like they want to do anything. And this is just a camper. Clay County has a, a law that nobody's to live in a camper. But obviously it doesn't uh, so this so this neighbor Airbnb. of yours this neighbor of yours has a home uh, a, a yeah. standing home and then he Airbnb's a camper in his backyard. Oh no, it's not his backyard. It's five feet from my side yard. So he air. I mean, who that is? Who the heck staying in the camper? No offense, that ain't the cream of the crop staying in that camper. I mean, we haven't had any issues yet, other than the one guy walking around in my yard, but. Like, I don't know these people, you know. He's like, oh, we vet them. I'm like, I'm going to trust you to vet them when you've lived here two years and I've met you one time. All my other neighbors in the neighborhood, we all know each other, uh, hang out with each other, and he's just kind of a loner. Well, I don't even know you, so I'm supposed to trust my family with your vetting. Mm. You know, this is a this is what makes it very tricky. And thank you, Ray. I I do hope you one, get it one, figured out. I got one more. I oh, have one more thing. Real quick, I'm running he, out of time. Go ahead. All, sorry. He's well. Being that it's in a camper, he dumps his his wastewater into his uh, poo pond, and that stinks up the whole neighborhood. Oh my gosh. And that's just a, and it's like, dude, how disrespectful can you be? So. I'll so you got you got the poop from the airbnb folks that you have to now smell on a regular basis basically oh, yes and gosh. the county knows about it the county knows about it oh my gosh right keep so. us posted man that is just that is that is a great example there where i get it it's your property no one's going to tell me what to do with my property but at the same time if you buy a property zoned r1 then should you be allowed to willy-nilly turn that into a commercial use hotel? Well, no, you've already been told what you can do. Yeah. You know what you can do. You know what the zoning requirements and rules are. Do you get to just make them up then because you feel like it and inconvenience everybody around you? I don't think so. And I hope more cities do what Prairie Village did, banning these short-term rentals for at least a 30-day stay.